adjusting the speed of the ship. Looks like she just needs three or four warp induction coils. We have plenty of those to spare. Position yourself near the ship and press F to interact with it. Well, looks like we're on our own. At least they said thank you, I guess. About that cloaked ship full of Klingons? Almost done, Captain. Level 2 diagnostic shows that almost all of the plasma injectors are damaged beyond repair. Not enough. Plasma injectors are made to withstand quite a beating, but I think the Klingons specifically sabotaged them when they boarded us. It's an easy way to cripple a ship. I'm installing what spares we have, but we're short three injectors. Without them, we can't go to warp. We're not the first ship the Klingons have hit here. There's wreckage all over this region. I can scan the derelicts and see if any of them have intact plasma injectors. I found some suitable debris in the boneyard nearby. Destroy three of those nacelles, and we should get the parts we need. Press the space bar to fire energy weapons. An item has dropped for you. Move towards the item and press F to loot it. Taking through scraps we've left behind. Yeah, that guy's getting annoying. These plasma injectors will do the trick, sir. Gorgeous technology. Type R, if I had to guess. 3.7 liter flow put with shielded reservoirs and a drop flow induction coil. You have your problems, I have mine. I'll need some time to get everything installed and run a level one diagnostic. <laughs> we don't want to blow up the moment we hit warp one. Zarva's dealing with the warp corp, but until she's done, we're still stranded out here with no way to call for help. Oh. Don't forget the cloaked Klingon battlecruiser. It's probably making repairs faster than we are. Of course we can. We're the class of 2409. 
Tevrel has been working with the engineers, and they've pinpointed the locations of several Klingon signal jammers. That's what blocked our communications during the ambush. I, I reckon... You must be within 10 kilometers of an enemy to attack it. Use your plasma beam to weaken shielded targets. Use your torpedoes on an enemy when... Communications are operational, sir. Shall I send the distress signal? That Klingon ship took some real damage. I'll bet she's leaking plasma all over the place. We might be able to use that to find them. Understood. I'd rather not die to Klingons on my first day. Got it. I can trace the plasma signature right to the source. I'll send the source of the plasma signature to navigation. It will show up on the map. It's pretty far out, sir. We should use the ship's full impulse power to reach it. This will temporarily take power from other systems, but vastly improve our speed. Once we drop out of full impulse, the power will return to other systems. I can make your depth swift! Activate full impulse by clicking on the arrow. Deactivate full impulse by clicking on it again. Your ship is outfitted with phaser beam banks. These weapons have a 270 degree firing arc. This is the firing arc for the forward phaser banks. This is the firing arc for the rear phaser banks. Note that both the forward and rear phasers have an overlapping arc of fire on the sides of your ship. Firing at enemies within the overlapping portion of your firing arcs is known as broadsiding. This allows both the forward and rear phaser banks to fire on the same target at the same time, increasing your damage output. Federation captains who prefer beam bank weapons favor the broadside technique and will often circle their target, keeping them within the broadside arc at all times. 